Warning. Proceeding without caution will bring you into spoiler territory for the media displayed on screen. Timestamps are gifted in the description and comment section. Viewer discretion is advised. Honey Pop was a game released to the world on January 19th, 2015, which followed the story of a love fairy by the name of Q, finding you in a bar and immediately realizing that you're a massive virgin, and sets on to making you the biggest chad in the world. The game quickly rose to huge success because of how interesting it was, with it blending the aspects of your average dating sim, with elements of fantasy, add in some Candy Crush style gameplay, and top it off with your casual hentai, and this game had massive amounts of playthroughs on the gaming side of YouTube. Thank you Audacity for having a fucking aneurysm, and cutting out the original audio. Very cool. Well, after four years in a one-off game, the devs of Honey Pop is back with Honey Pop 2 Double Date, released on February 8th, 2021. And today, I'm gonna bring back out my degeneracy side, because the last time I did that, it went over pretty well. And I'll be going over all the aspects of the game and giving my thoughts on it and my overall feelings of the game as a whole. So come with me, my fellow degenerates, as we conquer horny space beings, fuck a massive amount of times, fuck horny space beings, and save the world. The story of Honey Pop 2 Double Day is pretty simple. After having a session with your fuck buddy, Ashley, Q shows up at your place and is amazed at how much of a chad you've become since the last time you two have met. She then tells you that two nymphogens will soon be on their period and it will destroy the world, so you need to face up against them and give them the best dick they've ever received so they'll be put to sleep. In order to do this though, you need to collect fairy wings, which are only obtained by having threesomes. So after Kiyu shows you how to have one on a plane, you're off on your own on a resort to go find 12 girls that will all find their own compatibility with each other and have a total of 24 threesomes. After contracting multiple STDs from Sarah's ratchet pussy, you and Kiyu are off to a volcano where she awakens the nymphogens and you're then forced to double date all the girls you've met up until this point because they're all being mind controlled. After conquering the dating, you must fuck the nymphogens and the world is saved. So yeah, the devs decided to take a massive left turn with the series and lead the story down an even more big fantasy route instead of your run-of-the-mill hentai dating sim like the first game was. And honestly... I like it a lot. Like I said in the intro of this video, the first game was very unique with its blend of dating sims, hentai, candy crush, and fantasy. So for the sequel to continue adding and blending new shit is pretty dope. In the end, it's still a hentai game, so you're not getting some deep emotional story from it, but overall, I thought it was pretty cool, especially with how in this game there is a satisfying ending and a bigger drive to finish it, to me at least. Double Date seems to take one of the key elements of the first game, the Candy Crush gameplay during dates and sex, and then throw out everything else and redo it. Passion is a bit revamped from being a 25, 50, 75, 100 percent as bar, and now you just see each individual number. Gifts are revamped as well. The hunger and drinking bar are completely gone, and instead, food is now used to give a girl passion or sentiment that you can enter a date with, while date gifts are now something you can give to a girl and they'll hold on to until you decide to take it away, instead of you constantly holding it in your inventory and you can use it for every girl like in the first game. With this, you can just give them the gift during a date with them if you have enough sentiment in order to use that gift, just like the first game. Upgrading your stats is now used by buying smoothies that are tailored to either sexuality, flirtation, romance, or talent, as well as unique gifts and shoes that are to be given to certain characters. And speaking of buying, the pricing system is now completely overhauled. Instead of having one currency that will allow you to buy anything, you're now given four different currencies that are all based on the four traits. I haven't been able to find a consistency when it comes to how much of the currency you'll be getting at the end of a date. I, it just seems like it's randomly generated based on how well you've done. Getting to fuck has been redone as well. Instead of having to go out on five dates in order to fuck, you just have to have two successful double dates, and after the second one, it's an immediate threesome. Because of the removal of the hunger and drinking bar, talking now takes stamina, which I'll get into that in a little bit, but now, instead of trying to gain knowledge on the girls for the future, or gain affection, it just gives you baggage or small amounts of currency. What is baggage, you might be asking? Well, baggage is basically just debuffs during dates. The only positive that comes from this is being able to bring more gifts to a date and max out all your stats. But the trade-off is always having your gameplay get 
fucked by a random effect that the girls have. I initially started playing this game on hard mode because it was called Incel, and the only positive baggage I found from that was Lillian's The Darkness, where broken hearts get turned into positive hearts for her. So at least it gave an easy way to get rid of those. Then I went to easy mode later on, so baggage never had an effect, so uh, who knows if there's any other positive ones. And then there are the actual dates themselves. Instead of going on single dates, you're now doing double dates, which is Kiyu says. Not the lame kind of double date where it's two couples. The cool kind, where it's you and two chicks. So because this is a different kind of dating, the gameplay during them is a bit different from the first game. There's still the Candy Crush gameplay and everything you've learned from the first game when it comes to aligning tokens stays true in here. The thing is, because you're going out with two girls, you're now given the stamina meter. With every move, you lose stamina on whatever girl you have selected, and it varies on how big the move is. Once the stamina meter reaches zero, you're not able to use that girl at all until her meter rises up to four, which goes up one after every move. You also have tokens that will refill the stamina meter, which I only found myself using if I already had one girl knocked out and the other had one bit of stamina left. Honestly, I don't hate the addition of stamina and actually kind of like it because it gives dates a bit more of a challenge to get through and if you get ahead of yourself and start blasting through shit, it can really fuck you up. Once you get to threesomes though, you can pretty much just forget everything about dating and the only thing you have to do is align tokens as fast as possible just like in the first game. Also, according to my very reputable source, which is my friend who played this game on normal mode, baggage doesn't have an effect during threesomes. So that's cool, I guess. I don't really have much complaints about the new gameplay, to be honest. The only ones I can think of is baggage and I guess the currency. I guess baggage can be excused as a way of balancing the game because if it didn't exist, you would be pretty fucking overpowered. But when I had to deal with it, it was just an annoyance, if anything. Sorry, my allergies are acting up big time. Fuck your allergies, this flower isn't for you! And then the currency, again, just gets kind of annoying, cause you'll find yourself wanting to buy something, but you can't because the game didn't give you enough flirtation after your past 15 dates. Why is it always flirtation that I'm low on? But yeah, other than some slight annoyances, the game still comes out being incredibly fun and really addicting. I found myself many times telling myself that I'll just finish one last date and then I end up doing another 10. I also found the easiest way to max your stats. Talk to a girl, unlock her baggage, do this for every girl, go on a date and fail as soon as possible to reset their stamina and ability to unlock more baggage. Do this for every girl. Repeat until all three baggage is unlocked for every girl. Buy all the shoes, unique gifts, and smoothies you can find in the shop. Spend the day going to every girl and giving them their gifts and smoothies. Continue buying everything every day when the shop resets. Do this until eventually you have max stats. Granted, now you have to deal with baggage, but having the max stats and extra date gifts really help, especially during the boss fight. And if you decided to be a Chad, baggage ain't a problem, <laughs> Also, when you complete the main story, you're given the option to do the Nymphogens again, or a new thing, which is the Dating Gauntlet, where you're constantly doing double dates and it gets harder after every success. The gameplay in that is very similar to the Dating and the Nymphogen battle, so that's kind of cool. Also, it's an easy way to get currency, which you're going to need a lot of it if you want to get the outfits. So yeah, overall, I enjoy the gameplay and I'm not that upset with the massive revamp. It brings in a ton of new things, and they're enough to make the game not incredibly boring. I also like how whenever you're on a date, it shows for every girl what their favorite and least favorite trait is, unlike in the first game where you kept having to load up the honeybee to remind yourself unless you could remember it. And yeah, the honeybee in the first game isn't that bad, you just have to left click, but it, it's still just, you know, better to just look over in the corner and see. Double Day brings in two characters from the first game, other than Kiyu, seven characters from Honeycam, and adds three new characters into this universe. The two from the original are Jessie and Lola, which I was so incredibly happy to see Jessie back because she was my personal best girl from the first game. The seven from Honeycam are Brooke, Candice, Lilani, Lillian, Nora, Sarah, and Zoe, and the three new characters are Abia, Ashley, and Polly. I guess there's also the Nymphogens, but they're just there to literally get fucked to sleep there's nothing you really learn about them. To give you a quick rundown of all the characters, here's what they are and where I'd rank them in the tier list. Abia, a Middle Eastern girl who goes against everything her people and religion are for and leads into her sexuality and always has sex on the mind. The political commentary with her character is a pretty neat addition and I liked whenever she talks with Lillian and there's the drastic difference between her actual serious life and Lillian just being edgy as fuck. 
My parents would literally kill me if they knew I'd had a threesome with people that I, like, just met. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> a tier. Ashley, a British fashion model and also your fuck buddy. Easily best girl and is the 2D embodiment of my dream girl from the looks to how she acts and her personality. And as much as I shit on the British, their accent on a woman is so incredibly fucking hot, S tier. Brooke, a gold digging cheating milf taken straight out of the kind of porno I'd watch. Would be A tier, but not a fan of the vocal delivery she has, so B tier. Candice, a stripper with two brain cells. Personally, not my favorite kind of girl, but she got some fucking titties on her, so C tier. Jessie, retired big titty milf porn star, and as I've said before, best girl from the first game. S tier. Lailani, shy girl who's not really into her sexuality and just into sex in general. She'll have it, but she's very awkward with it. Not really my type, but not a bad character to be around. D tier. Lillian, edgy, rebellious 18-year-old. You'd think this would be my thing because I fetishized 2005, but she comes off as really annoying. D tier. Lola, nice girl who's in the fashion, but also willing to get a bit freaky and fuck on an airplane. B tier. Nora, a Latina tomboy aunt who grew up in the ghetto and is trying to make ends meet on the island. Even to the points of her resulting in stealing jewelry from Lola. Third best girl in my opinion. Her voice actress is absolutely perfect and has the kind of Latina voice and delivery that I personally enjoy a lot. S tier. Polly, a fashion makeup YouTuber who can also be a feuda. I wish her dick was shown more than just a bulge in outfits or her railing brook, but other than that, she's fine. C tier. Sarah. 17-year-old Sid Snap, F tier. Zoe, a weird cyberpunk-esque chick who somehow knows about the love fairies and your mission. She's fine, but I wasn't a big fan of the wispy voice she had, and her whole look just didn't really do much for me. D tier. Oh, and Kiyu is easily S tier, because goddamn is she so much fun in this game. Overall, other than Sarah, I pretty much liked all the characters, and they were pretty fun to be around throughout the game. The change of the art style improvement and the voice acting also helps a lot. I saw some people on the Honeypot Discord server complain about the new art style and say that it's worse than the first game, but I gotta massively disagree with that. Personally, I think the new art style is far better, with it heavily leaning more towards that anime art style and... I just like it more. Also, while I was replaying the first game to figure out the differences, I noticed that, uh... The voice acting didn't age well. We've been here for at least an hour. God damn it, Nikki, and you were one of my favorites. In here, though, there's not a bad voice acting moment. Even with someone like Sarah. At least her voice actor can portray the annoying Japanophile incredibly well. I never played Honeycam, so I can't really comment on any possible differences between the characters that were brought over from that game. But I can't say that Kira Buckland stays being pretty good as Lola. And while the seductive MILF voice was there in Amanda Burning's performance of Jesse in the first game, Morgan Lore really nails it in here. But the biggest improvement is Jacqueline Amy as Q. Her performance in the first game is... Eh, for me, but god damn does she step it up immensely in this game. She sounds so much more confident and just overall more lively than it makes any time that she's around one of the major highlights of the game. Oh, I can't believe you get to smack all these titties around and I just have to watch. What a jip. So yeah, overall, while there aren't many new characters in this game, I think the devs really knew how to make the perfect setup of girls. Uh, 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 other than Sarah. Finally, a small section is the music. If you notice a little pattern in this video, I tend to kind of think that everything in this game is better than the first one, and the music is no exception. Granted, the last time I played through the first game was in 2017, and I don't remember if that was back when I would play games with the music off. I don't think so, because going through the soundtrack, I was able to recognize Turtle Bay Beach, Shopping Mall, Fitness Club, and Lusty's Nightclub, but that might also be from my latest playthrough that I haven't gotten that far into. But even then, there really wasn't much from that soundtrack that stood out to me. This one, however, ooh boy. <laughs> Title theme, golf course, and especially strip club are absolute fucking bangers that I could listen to endlessly.
port and cruise ship perfectly captures the vibe of a summer vacation spent on an island resort. Royal Swede sounds like it came straight out of a classic sensual porn. Rooftop Lounge is just a remaster of Scenic Overlook, but I like it a lot more in here. The guitar riff is so absolutely sexy, and in Rooftop, it feels a lot warmer. And the drums feel so compressed to the point of slight distortion, but also sound very nice. And I like how Lola even references the fact that it's the same song. Is it just me, or do you feel like you've heard this song before? Aquarium and Secret Grotto are very chill and vibe-worthy, while also having elements that fit with the aquatic theme of those two locations. And then there's Surf Shack, which sounds like the embodiment of those old-school teen beach movies. The first one isn't bad, I find the second one just having a lot more highlights, and I just personally like the production of mixing on it a lot more. Overall, I think Honeypop Double Day is a fantastic and incredibly fun game and is better than the first one in pretty much every way possible. The characters and the music are more memorable, the voice acting is a lot more top notch, the story is more fun and entertaining as well as the gameplay. While the first game was more of your classic dating sim, this one leads more towards just having a fun fantasy hentai game. And while I can see how one wouldn't like this game because it could feel like a far cry from the original game, I think it's pretty neat that the devs decide not to make the same game again, but decide to do what made the first one so good and blend a bunch of shit together and make something new and unseen. After putting in over 20 hours into the game and my save being at 94% complete, which I am planning on making that thing 100%, I can say that I have not once found any boredom while playing this. The only dialogue I've skipped is Sarah because she's annoying as fuck. But with everyone else, I sit through that dialogue and listen to it, while in the first game, I kind of find myself just skipping through it all because there's nothing in that that I seem to enjoy. and. And sometimes it, it, it gets pretty bad. And I don't hate the first game. I enjoyed it a lot when I played it the first time. I still have the cheat sheet that I made while going through that game, and I have fond memories of it. And even while writing this, I ended up going back and playing a bit of it. And I, being honest while recording this, I kind of want to go play the first game and, and try to beat it. So, obviously, I don't hate that game. But I just personally enjoy Double Date on a far higher level, and because of that, I give Honey Pop 2 Double Date a 9 out of 10. Hope you all enjoyed the degeneracy. <laughs>